hello, um, my name is Richard Hughes. Um, I'm talking about the Color Hug Spectrum as a type device. Um, I've been working on open source for about, well, I guess over a decade now. I work for Red Hat and the desktop team, and I maintain the Color D, a uh, lot of the color management tools that I am Color Manager. Also, package kit, um, GNOME software, uh, used to be HAL, so bits and pieces of basically up the stack top, top, to that, top down. Um, and in my spare time, I kind of took up photography. I'm not a very good photographer, but I did notice that all the colours weren't right when I started printing stuff. And then went down the rabbit hole and started discovering that there are no open tools to actually, um, to actually create colour profiles to be able to fix this properly. So it all kind of, also kind of went from there. So we invented this thing called Colour Hug. Um, Colour Hug is a tri-stimulus colorimeter, which is good for profiling screens, basically to make measure colours accurately on a, on a display technology. Um, so far, we've sold 2,300 devices, which is about 2,250 more than we thought we sell. Um, and that's been done in the last three years. We've been upgrading it, so we've been fixing bugs, we've been adding features as the, as the years went through. And we've made a lot. You know, we, we, I made an initial batch of 50 and kind of hoped I hadn't wasted a lot of money. I hoped that I could sell maybe the majority of that batch. And I think in the first three weeks of sale, we sold 800. So it was a, a, a project that sort of massively blew all our expectations. And a lot of people have been very happy with. So when I say we made the devices, we literally did. Me and my wife were sitting there making these things by hand, making the tools to punch the holes in the plastic boxes, sticking the stickers on the boxes, um, trusting the envelopes, packing in DVDs into cases. So we literally did it completely ourselves. So we had no capital to start up with. Um, and many weekends and evenings have been spent making colour hugs. The first thousand we made without making any profit. We had no like no um, money for time. We were working for free. Now, thankfully, a little bit's kind of working out with volume discounts we're getting. But it was kind of a labour of love. Now, I guess a confession. I'm not. This thing about colour hug spectra that I kind of talk about, um, we can't call it spectra anymore because I got a very nice legal letter from Spectro GmbH um, saying you can't use the word spectro. So we're now calling it colour hug plus. So any times I do slip and say the word colour hug spectro, just kind of in your head write down colour hug plus. That's kind of just the uh, colour hug, the word we already had a trademark on in the UK. So it's like an easy, easy way around it. Um, so just when I miss talk, just replace it in your head. So why do we need a new device? Why wasn't the colour hug good enough? Well, for a few decades, our only display technology that most people had was a CRT monitor. And the way a CTM monitor works is you have an electron beam that hits a layer of phosphors. And if the electron beam is turned on when it hits the phosphor, it glows. And there's very few phosphors uh, for this kind of technology that are stable, cheap, um, and, and easy to handle. So consequently, a lot of CRT monitors actually had the same primaries, the same red, the same green, the same blue. So you could design tools which were targeted for a whole class of equipment. And then something happened. Display manufacturers began selling displays that could display many more colours much more deeper blues, much more vivid reds, much, much more kind of natural greens. Uh, but in doing so, they changed the phosphors that they were using. Now, this was kind of a it was going to happen anyway with the shift to TFT and then LED. Um, but it's happened now much more quickly. And now displays you can get in the shop are much, much better in terms of colour gamut than you could have got with a CRT monitor. So the upgraded screen technology kind of drives us to do something slightly different. Color Hug 1 tried to solve this problem using like correction matrices, which you could apply to a device. But to create the, uh, the uh, correction matrix, you also needed to have a very expensive photospectrometer. So you're kind of in a situation to buy a cheap colorimeter, you also have to buy an expensive spectrometer to get an accurate result. So as time goes on, colorimeters targeted specific primaries begin to stop working so well. This is a kind of a good example. So you can see this is the um, spectral output of different screens. So for a long, long time, like the iPad 2, Motorola Zoom, etc., we're all very same thing. So the same kind of blue, the same kind of um, reds, etc. And then OLED came along, and OLED is a very vibrant, very 
much wider color gam a, a, a range of colors that you can see. And really, if you try and use like, original color hug, or for that matter, Huey or DTP94 or something, on one of these new types of display, you just get completely the wrong answer. You get completely invalid re readings. So really, we need to go back to the physics and try and think, how can we fix this with all these different display technologies in existence? Now, colour geeks kind of recoil in horror now, but this is my way of kind of showing the horseshoe is all the colours that you can see, and the triangle is all the colours that the display can display. And so you can see that the difference in colours isn't slight, it's dramatic. So with the advent of OLED, it's, it's really increased the number of colours that we can display by a long, long way. So how do we solve this? Well, we can spend millions of pounds and do a massively parallel spectrometer type device. So these, these, these I think this is from one from the uh, NPL. Uh, millions of pounds, you squirt photons into a fiber optic, it splits them apart, uh, hit a diffraction grating, uh, and you measure what the, the frequencies that come off it. Um, kind of impractical to sit in your, uh, in your design room. But you can get lab equipment. Now this is, I think it's about 35,000 euro worth of lab equipment, which is basically doing the same thing, slower, on the bench top. Um, very capable piece of equipment, but its price kind of takes it out of the range of most people in this room. So we need a much sort of smaller and cheaper version of this that maybe isn't quite so accurate uh, or quite so precise, but still does a good enough job so we can create an ICC profile. Then x rights really bust open the market. They produce this thing called a colour monkey, um, which it lets you uh, profile printers and displays all for about 300 euro. And it's a really amazing piece of kit. If you take one apart, obviously you void your warranty, but, um, but if you take one apart, you see that the design and the plastics, it's all a very high-end uh, high piece of kit. Now, we actually broke one down and stuck it under lots of microscopes and stuff. And between me and a different consulting company, we worked out they'd spent several million dollars developing the spectro unit inside this unit. So they've got a very, obviously, very big R&D budget, and they've produced something that is technically very good. Not without its drawbacks. Um, the main drawback, I guess, from my point of view is um, we talked this morning with Chris about um, additives you put into paper, which make the paper fluoresce. Now, this can't measure um, the fluorescent whitening additives in paper, and so you can get a very odd result when you try using it um, with UV light sources uh, or without. Um, so it's, it's an awesome piece of kit for the price, um, but it's still not without fault. And then there's the people that say, well, you can make a spectroscope using a bit of broken DVD and a defocused webcam. Yes, yes, you can. You, you, you really can. Uh, and it, it's really, if you want to explain to kids how you, diffraction gratings work and how a, a microspectroscope might work, it's a really good way of showing kids. But it's neither accurate nor precise. When you're talking about um, nanometers being the difference between an accurate result and a non-accurate result, just the glue you're using to stick the DVD onto the camera will change it by 10 nanometers on a warm day to a cold day. So you have all these thermal effects and all these non-linear effects and the fact that the DVD is curved. You've got all these, so many unknowns. It's a miracle it actually ever works at all, let alone to be able to take an accurate reading from. So yeah, cute trick, but not so much for creating ICC profiles or having any confidence in what you're doing. Also, this doesn't really have an illuminant, so you can't sort of shine a light on something uh, and get some sort of spectral data back. Another issue with a lot of um, uh, equipment, including to some extent the Color Monkey, is that not all uh, monitors are producing a nice sort of out, 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 out waves. So, so the blue primary is very clear, the green primary is very clear, but if you try and sample this at say, uh, say 5 or 10 nanometers resolution, you're going to miss a lot of the spikes, which means that the profile you get isn't accurate to actually, actually what you see in reality. So you have to actually have a piece of quite precise, accurate equipment to produce a profile that's actually worth using, let alone any good. Also, people nowadays are buying high-end printers with high-end ink, and they want to be able to profile what they're producing as well as what they're seeing on screen. So they want to be able to soft-proof, and they also want to be checking that what they send to the, pr to the printer is actually going to, what they're going to see when, when the print run's done. But with printing, it's not emitting light. So you have the issue that the, amp the light 
the ambient light is affecting the colour you see of the ink. So for something like a sodium vapour light, obviously you see everything's yellow. But for LED light, it's much more like daylight, still spiky, but much more kind of the colours you expect. And so one of the solutions for this I found is that if you create a, a micro uh, a spectroscope with a wideband illuminant and a UV switched illuminant at the same time, you can kind of mitigate some of these effects um, just from a couple of dollars worth of equipment. So I have not the experience um, nor the optical ability to design something that's thermally stable, accurate and precise enough for the results that I need. So I emailed and spoke on the phone with about maybe 10, maybe a dozen companies, um, getting some quotes back. The most expensive quote back for the NRE, the non-refundable engineering costs, was I think, I can't remember the name of the company, but it was 350,000 euro. So I said no. Uh, most of the other companies refused to, to bid at all, and this was the only company that would give me any quote. The initial quote was for NRE 50,000 euro, but we agreed as it was an open hardware project, they would absorb four fifths of the cost of uh, any, any, any product on the assumption it would be not tied to me as a manufacturer, which kind of makes sense from an open hardware point of view, too. Now, I think that's an awful lot of money. I don't have that much money. As my wife says, that's the price of a new car. Obviously, to invest £18,000 on a piece of hardware that you're selling to basically colour geeks, um, there has to be some sort of kind of profit back to be able to make this worthwhile. Otherwise, you're spending a lot of money and getting not a lot back. And actually, when you do the sums, when you actually add up all of the stuff that it takes to ship a product, like the elastic strap, the label on the box, the plastic screw that holds it all together, uh, not including la any labour at all, and then you take off that, and you might have tax as well, you're left with £14 per unit if you do an RRP price to match the colour, to match the colour monkey. Now, 18,000 divided by 14 is an awful lot of units to sell on the assumption you're not getting paid to build any of them. So it's, from a business point of view, makes no sense. The only thing logically to do would be to raise the RRP, um, but then 300 pounds is a lot of money for a measurement device, let alone 400, you know? So am I marketing this thing wrong? I'm marketing this so far at Colour Geeks, and so far 83 people have said, yeah, I'll, I'll buy one for uh, uh, 300 uh, pounds. Now, 83 is not enough to make this commercially viable. It's just, I, I, I would be spending 18,000 and getting back 7,000. So it's, it would be a ridiculous thing to do. So am I marketing this to the wrong people? Am I, should I be marketing this at Windows people, at OS X people, <laughs> if I'm doing that? Do they care that it's open hardware? Do they care that they could access the firmware, they could write patches, they could do this kind of stuff? I think by changing my market away from Linux kind of geeks, I'd be kind of pricing myself out of the market. But I've been playing, I've been prototyping. This is an original ColorHug 1 PCB with stuff bolted on until I can make it work with it as a spectro device. So this is all hand soldered, multi-level. Um, it, it's kind of crazy. So imagine that, that bottom copper wire is 0.7 millimeters wide. So you can see how kind of, kind of fine some of the soldering is. So yeah, basically it, the prototype works. Obviously the optics stuff would need the NRE money for other companies to do who have experience in this field. But the electrical side, nah, that's, that's no worries. I can, I can, I can do that bit. Um, this is a linear CCD which is designed in the 80s for photocopiers. Happens to work quite well as a, a, a collection device for a spectrometer. Um, the specs I'm aiming for is kind of close to the, uh, if not better, than the Color Monkey uh, with a UV switched illuminant. Um, so I'm pretty sure I can do this. And from a hacker's point of view and from a sort of open hardware, free software kind of point of view, I'd love to do this. From a business person and someone who's married to a wife, I don't think I can do this. It's a too much risk and it's too much money. So it, it, it's really a role. It really is. I've got uh, 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 space prototypes. This is just a, a prototype basically saying, uh, if I, for the box, can I physically fit all the chips in? So most of these chips are little bits of cardboard and the spectro device is uh, plastics that I had to spare. But it's basically showing what would it look like, how big would it be, where would the USB port go, all the kind of the, the stuff you have to work out quite early. So that's my talk. Thank you very much for listening. If you do have any ideas or feedback um, on ways that I could make this happen, 
it's obviously a money thing, really. It's, technically, it's possible. Should we do this? Could we do this? Um, any ideas, kind of welcome. So thank you for listening. Um, any questions, please? question. <laughs> uh, this is kind of an obvious question, but since you're asking, should you market this to Mac and Windows people, I'm just wondering what experience you've had with other OSs already. Like, have you heard from people who are using the original Color Hug or want to use the original Color Hug on other platforms so that you yep. have any way to gauge? So, interest? very few people use a Color Hug on either OS X or Windows. Um, it does work now. We've, there's various firmware bugs we fixed to make it possible. Um, but the kind of people that are running Windows Vista or whatever don't really care that it's open hardware. They, they, you can get a, a, a cheaper version, which isn't open hardware. They don't care, you know? Uh, but that said, like someone said this morning, 1% of the Windows market is more than 95% of the Linux market. So I'm I'm not I'm I'm not a marketing person. I, you know I'm a geek. You know I'm not good at the kind of the the, the the business side of this stuff. So if any of you do have any ideas or kind of can help, I'm really all, all ears. Talk to him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.